In 2008, Grant and Kerry Hickling won the Federated Farmers Gisborne Wairoa Hill Country Farmer of the Year. The past few years have seen extended periods of drought in the region. We went to see how they've not only survived, but thrived on their property just south of Gisborne. We're a sheep and beef breeding operation. We generally don't trade. We try and fatten all, all our own stock, but it's been a bit difficult the last three seasons. We're 591 hectares and about 585 effective. Um, it's a bit hard to get, get your handle on what our winter carrying is with the seasons we've had, but generally about 6,200 stock units. One of the major strengths is probably what, um, and I'd be the first to admit, probably what made us look so good and probably the, the judging of the farm of the year was the number of labour units we've got for the number of stock units we've got. We get up to close to 7,000 stock units wintered sometimes and if you divide it by that by the one or the one point, perhaps 1 1.2 of Kerry and I, with the help of the kids, another thing I might add is that when it was judged, the kids' time and Kerry's time was added in there as a cost so there was no free lunch there. I actually said it at, at the Farm of the Year field day we had here that you might as well, if you're not making money, you might as well stay in bed. And I mean, that's not a criticism of other guys, it's just, just the, way, the way we see it. The Hicklings employ a variety of breeds in their breeding cow herd. They're a fruit salad mix. We chase the hybrid vigour with our cattle. I've got no particular affiliations to any particular breed. We'll just keep cr crisscrossing and, yeah, just going all backwards and forwards sometimes. But the Jersey is used over our yearling heifers. I mean, the only reason we use that is to get a small calf. It's pretty bulletproof as far as we can see. There's no calving problems at all. Max. We are going back to the Angus. All the fathers of the calves you'll see are Angus, and they've been used again. We've sort of done the round robin, and then we're sort of consolidating a little bit. But um, they're all the same colour once you pull that skin off. They're born from the 1st of October on. We kill about a third of them mid-winter, and then they're all dead before, when they're just two before the next Christmas. We generally get 365 kgs on the hooks we average, which we're pretty pleased with, because you know, we haven't got any flat country, they're all fattened on the hills. And they're a big profit driver, those bulls, so we endeavor to look after them. These are just mixed age cows. They do the job that, that probably a mower does in the dairy industry. They clean up the rough stuff, but they also do something else on that. They turn that rough grass, which is pretty low energy stuff, into, into milk for their calves and they're growing their calves. And of course, the other thing is they condition the, the, the grass for the sheep. And um, we, I mean, we can't mow, we're too steep. So um, they, they rip it off. And um, I think they're a pretty valuable tool. If you looked at it at a straight kilo of grass consumed, they're, they're actually very poor, but if you throw into the mix that they're making the pasture better for your ewes and lambs, and they're growing a calf as well, they're a very valuable tool. Um, I, I wouldn't be without them. The heifers, they're selected on, um, well basically the first, first criteria of selection is whether they're in calf or not. We carve them as um, two year olds, so they're mated as 15 months, and um, they go to the Jersey Bull, and um, all those jerseys are killed. We obviously don't keep any half jerseys to go into the mob. Those are the mixed age ewes. The ones are shorn are the older ewes. We've, we've got a few bought in ewes there as well, just to sort of make for the dry years we've been having. They seem, their teeth don't seem to be lasting quite so long. And the woolly ones are the young, younger ewes. We only share the ewes once a year in July. Whether we continue on with that, I, I, I know what's going to happen. We're going to run into a wet July and it'll be a nightmare to shear. So I've been thinking about going to shearing mid-January, full wool then. One of the reasons we're shearing in July is because we, we've got a race well um, sheep crutch which we do all our crutching and dagging through. And it means that we don't have to do a, a half belly on the ewes in the winter, which is a bit of a saving. So um, we don't, just while we're on sheep, we don't shear our lambs. We don't shear our ewe lambs until, um, until August when they're scanned. And um, a lot of guys will tell you that the lambs will do better, Sean, but not as far as we can see, they do about the same. We were just about to crack 150%. They're a Finn Texel Romney Cross, they're composites. For a few years there, we were sort of averaging the 145. Last year was disastrous after the eczema. 
but um, yeah, we were pretty pleased. We've made the decision to, to go to the Coopworth now. With the Texel and the, the influence of the facial eczema there, we, we're going to eczema intolerant and Coopworth rams, and we'll continue on that. On that. There's certainly nothing wrong with the modern Coopworth. But same with the sheep, we've built our own composite, and the Coopworth will be a, another component to that. We don't lamb till the 1st of September. Um, we're trying to um, hit it when the grass is actually growing or just before the grass is growing. I mean, it used to be the 1st of, 1st of August. It seems to suit quite well. The cows are set stocked in amongst the used to carve and they don't carve until the 1st of October, so they've got a bit of, bit of leeway there. And then the, the hoggets don't start lambing until the 1st of October also. We do make our hoggets. We don't get too carried away in what they weigh. The fin ram just seems to have to brush past them and they're in lamb, so um, it's um, not too much of an issue getting them in lamb, but of course the, uh, the issue is, is, is producing a decent um, to-dooth at the end of it. So we, we capture our in lamb, lamb hoggets. There's all the arg arguments for and against that, but we do it because we want a, want a reasonable to-dooth. And um, I think we're making a dollar or two out of doing it. We want to get bigger, you know, get a good solid second or whatever labour unit to take the pressure off Kerry a bit. We'd prefer to lease. There's not that much stuff around Gisborne which is leased. We're probably not looking for a different class of land or anything. We managed to get some pretty good weights into our cattle at the moment, and if the summer allows, we managed to fatten most of our lambs. So, um, yeah, just to build our business, to increase our business. But I do consider reducing debt building our business and that we have been doing that quite substantially the last few years. Well, I enjoy farming. I actually get a kick, I, I, sounds a bit silly, but if a gate doesn't swing properly and then or we, we fix it up, I actually quite like looking at that next time we go past. Um, so I get a lot of enjoyment from that sort of thing. I don't get enjoyment from bloody seeing the, the stock suffer through, um, through these drier periods, but I mean, as I say, that is farming. We've, um, I think we've probably learnt quite a bit through these these drier periods, and that um, you know you've got to you've got to get in there and get rid of the bloody things. Probably be a bit more proactive, I think. This program was made with funding from New Zealand on air.